Okay. <clears throat> if you want to leave the meeting, you've got time to do that now. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. This is, uh, yeah, the first book study. And um, I'm here with Bill S. Bill Swan, there he is. He's got his video off, but that's okay. You will hear him shortly. I am Nadia, and I am a recovered alcoholic and a member of many 12-step fellowships and an absolute lover of this book. So we're going to be doing plenty of diving around this book. So I hope you've got some highlighters and pens. And um, yeah, just let's have some fun tonight. Let's see where this goes. It's our first one. So bear with us. Um, I'm just going to have just a quick sip of good air and just want to get where my feet are. And uh, I'm so grateful to everyone who's come here this evening. Cool. Okay, so you're not going to believe me. We're going to start right in the beginning of the book. In fact, we're going to go right to the cover of the book and you're going to flip it open. Of oh, this background doesn't allow me to show you what I'm trying to get it. We're going to flip the book and there's a big blank page. Okay, for me, it's not blank because I've scribbled and I love scratching and it's make it just. It just ties in with my self will run riot. You know, we were always taught at school, not a lot of writing in your books, not a lot of scratching on walls, not a lot of graffiti. Well, guess what? In a in in yeah, in, in the 12 step fellowships, when you've got a big book in front of you, you can go wild. Gel pens, sparkle pens, stick it notes, I don't care. Make the book work for you. This book, in my opinion was written for each and every single square that I see here smiling at me. This book was written for you. It's your story. It's my story. It's your problem. It's my problem. We have a common peril and we have a common solution. So we make this book work for us. We line it out, write your name, wherever it says they and them. I best advice I ever got from my sponsor was to line it out and write it me, I, Nadia. Because the minute I see they and them, then it's not my problem. It's you guys, right? So then we can sit here all day long talking about how wrong you are. <laughs> I don't need an invite for that, I promise you. So the first page, it's blank. There's nothing on that page. And I love that we started this meeting with the set aside prayer, Rob. Thank you. Because that's what my sponsor has ask, asked me to do when I came in, to look at that page and just to be reminded that that is the sum total of what I know. That is the sum total of my mindset when I come to this book. I need to have an open mind, an open mind, because this is a magic book. And that front page that's blank like that is such a graphic illustration of the set aside prayer. God, help me set aside everything I think I know. And then we can bounce on over to the title page. Uh, let's see, it's the one where it's Alcoholics Anonymous. And then uh, this is the fourth edition. So it should be blank in the middle of Alcoholics Anonymous. And then at the bottom, it'll say there's a big line and it says Alcoholics Anonymous World Services, Inc. So we started this meeting with the saying of the set aside prayer. And that was a huge stumbling block for me. For my first 18 months in this program was coming in with old ideas and uh, I got it. I, I know everything and there's nothing nobody can teach me. And what does Bill say later on in the book? He says, we have to let go of our old ideas, else the result will be nil. And that sure as hell was the truth for me. Because at 18 months, I came in and I was at the jumping off point. I knew that I couldn't live with alcohol. I knew I couldn't live without it. And I knew loneliness like only a few can. So when I started the work again, I was asked to stop, stop speed reading. Stop pretending you know everything. Stop and Google and get yourself a dictionary. Where's my dictionary? So I went and I bought myself a fancy old school dictionary at a second-hand bookshop. 
smells old and musty and it's great. And let's look at the first words that we've got here. Alcoholics. I'm looking at a whole bunch of alcoholics and addicts. I hope so, because then I know I'm in the right place. I'm going to look at what the book tells us about what an alcoholic is. So on page 62, my darling friend Paige and sister always says she's doing the big book bounce. So let's do the big book bounce in her honor. Page 62, the third paragraph. The alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run riot. So there's one little description. There's quite a few in this book. On Roman numerals page 26, which is XXVI, there's another description of, of me. I don't know if it's the same, if I'm if it's you too. The body of the alcoholic is quite as abnormal as is mine. So my mind and my body is abnormal. That's the mind and body of an alcoholic. And then just two lines down from that, there's some more words that describe an alcoholic. Maladjusted to life. Oh my goodness. You know, if I went to a party as a child in single digits, I'd be so excited all morning about that party. I would get dressed to the nines. My hair, my mom would spend hours on my hair, on my hair. I would have the most beautiful outfit. And I would be so excited because the whole morning, everybody would tell me how beautiful I look and such a pretty little girl. And oh my goodness, all the attention. And the minute I walk into the birthday party, all that attention that was on me an hour earlier is now all of a sudden on somebody else. And within an hour, I would be feigning illness. I'd be feigning an asthma attack. I'd be holding my tummy, clutching it because I want to go home. Why? Because it, the attention's not on me anymore. I was completely maladjusted to life from a very young age. If the attention wasn't on me, I wanted to get the hell out of there. Full flight from reality. I lived and breathed in libraries because I could fly to different countries. I could climb onto those magic faraway trees and disappears into lands of elves and princesses. And I just, anything, anything that would take me away from the world that I was currently in, where I found my feet was probably the most painful place for me to be. It felt like my skin was on the wrong side out. So when I got into books in the library and I found out that very soon that there were many books and they never stopped really, that I could just jump into those books and disappear from reality. And the last description, which is <laughs> the first time I heard this, I got my back up. I didn't like this at all. But the more I read about the chapter one and chapter two, where we get to understand this disease of alcoholism, that it centers in our mind, then I got to really, really concede that I'm outright mental defective. So there's just a couple of descriptions of what alcoholic is, right? Then there's the word anonymous. Bill, when I'm done with this, you can jump in with me, please. Anonymous. Now, this is um, this is Nadia's version on this, okay? So please don't, whatever, there's a lot of things I might say. That's my opinion. If you can't relate it back to the book, just scrap it. Just scrap it. And a lot of what I say is also plagiarism. You know, I came into these rooms broken, broken, bent, just, just, I'd been through the ringer. You couldn't trust me. So AA and CA, the rooms of AA and CA, those people raised me. And a lot of what they've said is what I'm repeating here today. So there's nothing, I hope not a lot of originality is going to come through because you can't trust what comes <laughs> out of me, right? Outright mental defective. Don't trust much what I say. Just trust what I say when it. The minute I pick up the book and I've got my pen, you know it. Okay, right. Now we can listen to what she's saying. Anonymous. Google says anonymous is not to be known. Uh, Wikipedia says, it says here, um, sorry, I've just lost my place. I've just lost my place. Can you believe it? Anyway, not to be known. 
what I love about that is that this program, the power of this program doesn't come from me. It's not, the, the glory doesn't give, get given to me. You know, I'm not in here going, it's Nadia Jackson and this is what I do and this is what I've done. No, everything I am and everything that has happened and all the miracles that have happened in my life and all the miracles that I have seen happen in sponsees, in new friends and family in these in these rooms that are sitting here today with me, that is because of a power greater than myself. And I call that power, and, and the source of that power, I call God. I'll just, just as a disclaimer, you can call it what you want, higher power, love, creative intelligence, father of the light. I don't care what you call it. I call it God because one of my defects is laziness. I'm a lazy little cow. And the easier, shorter word that I can find, that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a lot of God, okay? A lot of God. If you don't like it, line up what I'm saying, okay? But that just comes from my defective character. I'm lazy. So that was the easiest one for me. I just love Anonymous. And I know that we've got our traditions or our spiritual principle around anonymity is our most treasured and the greatest. It's our foundation. And um, I'm just going to go over to Bill because I know that he's got something really powerful. He's shared a lot of powerful stuff with me around this anonymity. And uh, Bill, if you're able to, could you jump in? you got to give me about three minutes. Uh, All right. I'll keep, I'll keep waffling. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep waffling. Thank you. Like I said, this is our first go. This is our pilot, our pilot um, show, our pilot uh, call. So we might be a little bit wobbly. So I love you. Thank you. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I made a, I made a note under Alcoholics Anonymous because it's, I, I made, this is the note I made that my sponsor asked me to do. This is a textbook. And if you Google textbook, Google textbook means that it has to be studied intensely with another to learn something new. Studied intensely. My problem when I first came in, so my sobriety date is the 21st of June, 2020. It's on my first one. It's on my first one. And, and I, God willing, it'll be my last one. But when I first came into these rooms in 2014, someone handed me a big book and they said, give this a read. And I did what I always do. I speed read, you know, because then I can show everyone how clever I am and how quickly I can go through pages because we used to have speed reading competitions as a child. And it the half measures availed me absolutely nothing. This is not a book that can be re read like a story. You can, you can, but half measures will avail us nothing. This is a textbook that has to be studied with somebody who's properly armed with the facts. Sorry, my teenagers just jumped in. Okay, yeah. Um, so. I just wrote that, that it's going to be, this is a textbook and that it has to be studied intensely with another. Then it goes on to say the story of the story. So in these rooms, I've come to hear a lot of different stories of how we recover. Things like play the movie forward. Just don't drink and come to meetings. Don't phone the dealer, phone me. That stuff worked. I wouldn't have to be here on a Monday night talking to new friends and new family um, and getting a little bit sweaty and nervous here. I wouldn't have to do this. I would be able to go sit and, and scroll in Netflix land for three hours next to my teenager. Because I don't get to just come to meetings and not drink. Because if that worked, I wouldn't have to be here. I have no mental defense against that first drink. I am an alcoholic of the hopeless variety. My only solution is a spiritual experience. And that happens when I pick up these simple spiritual toolkits that is laid at my feet as outlined in the 12 steps. I see my brother is online. Yay. I'm so glad you're here with me tonight. Do you want to jump in for me? You want me to say something intelligent? Is that what it is? Since the spiritual life's not a theory, we have to live it. 
as a result of uh, self-will run riot. I'm living out of my car right now. I almost told Nadia that I was going to start, I would come on for the second pilot series, but that's not actually true. I'm actually over at one of my, what they call an Alcoholics Anonymous, a sponsor. We can't find that term in the book, but that means that someone who's willing to help a guy like me. I settled a, uh, a big suit regarding real estate and it's taking a while to get the proceeds. So I've been doing the best I can during my recovery, relying upon God and service to others. So it's working out and I've never been homeless since I got sober. I am an alcoholic. My name is Bill, as Nod just said, and uh, they get pretty sensitive. I want to share something, if I may, because she brought up an alcoholic of our type. I just left a men's meeting, and there's a lot of people there that haven't had a drink in a long time. And I had this feeling that I was actually in the wrong room. And what I mean by that is I meet, I meet the description of the real alcoholic. And for a long time, I felt out of place in a fellowship that has a book that was written for someone with the illness that I suffer from. And if I'm not careful, I sit a lot around a lot of people that drank their way into AA, put down a drink and never had the desire to drink again because the consequences of their drinking propel them into the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And they don't seem to have to do the things that I have to do. And it was somewhat frustrating. So I wasn't going to put this off. Uh, because this is something that's been planned. I don't know that that I fit the description of a narr narrator, narrator for a meeting like this. I'm pretty familiar with the book. I must not know too much about it. I've been reading it for 45 years. You know, I still read it. But the reality is, is the book comes alive. And if I fit the description of the alcoholic with the spiritual malady, what this book calls the real alcoholic, there's a solution in this book for me. On the same token, I told Nadja jokingly, I'm not here to teach the class to a whole bunch of non-alcoholics who want to run around and tell real alcoholics that they've been rocketed into some goddamn dimension that it takes a long time to get there. I understand we can have a spiritual experience in two weeks, but until you bury family members and go through the loss of life and the stuff that tends to exacerbate the separation from God that exists inside. Sometimes I think, you know, you guys know what I'm saying, I suspect. And what happens is we're, we're turning out a whole bunch of parrots that believe they have a solution to an illness I'm not so sure that they know that they have. So I don't know why I said all that, but I did. I guess nothing happens in God's world by mistake. And... Uh, she's being real ex extensive with the definitions and we understand the terminology. And I don't know why she asked me to come in now because I wasn't ready, but you got what you got. So at least you found out I'm as screwed up as every other real alcoholic on this platform. And it's only by God's grace that I stay sober. I'm sure I can add something to this if you let me catch up with you. But she's called on me three times. I want to let you know that I'm present. I'm just in the middle of doing things to put my physical life in order, but I believe that my spirit's okay because I woke up this morning, asked God to direct my thinking. I've kept all the commitments I've had thus far. I'm going to turn it back over to her until I have something impressive to say to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You always, that was exactly it, was being in these rooms and not knowing what the disease of alcoholism was and what the solution was. I thought it was going to meetings and that sent me right out after three years. So we'll go back to the title page. Thanks, Bill. The next line, the story of how many, not a few, many, thousands, we can line that out. You can actually scratch that out now and write millions because at the time when they were right when they wrote this book when bill was narrating this to ruth it was thousands but today it is millions of men and women 
have recovered, whoa, there's that word, <laughs> from alcoholism. There's so much loaded in this sentence. So let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's just check it out what's happening here. How many, many, many men and women have recovered? Men and women. So here's another one of those little myths that I hear in the rooms. And this is, I was, so, okay. I just, as a disclaimer, and there's no, these, this is not on my step four. It was on my step four a couple of months ago. It isn't anymore. The small town that I lived in was a town of, I'm sure some of you have heard it, this meeting maker ethos. Just come to meetings. Don't quit before the miracle happens. I spoke about that now now. That it, alcoholic of my type and Bill's type, we need a spiritual solution. We've got to take a sincere position, right? And I was coming to these meetings and there weren't many women. In fact, there were only two. The room was packed with men and I was being told only women sponsor women and men sponsor men. Stick to the women and the guys stick to the men. That's what I heard. I was brand new. I didn't know that I had a face. I didn't know that I had hands at the end of my arms. I was, people were asking me to raise my hand and ask for a sponsor. I was like, what? Do I, I don't, oh my God, I've heard, like, I knew nothing when I came in. I didn't, I didn't, I could barely get my name. I was broken, broken, broken. I'd lost everything. I was homeless, childless. I was, I was fried. I was done. And they were asking me to stick up my hand and ask for a sponsor. I thought, like sponsors do they give you like cool nike clothes and you know fun apparel and like what the hell is a sponsor the thing is they were telling me that women sponsor women and men sponsor men now I've, i just like for me like let's think about this if bill and bob right in the beginning had that as a rule i'm telling you that julie louise claire trish lena eileen sarah i see you sister debbie we wouldn't be here today. It would just be men in this fellowship. So, no. And you know, my sponsor taught me a really beautiful thing because I, I, I battled with that. I was like, but you know, what about the 30? Oh, anyway, there's, there's all this old language and old ideas. I'm not going to go down that road. I, I want to just stick to this. Uh, Bill is saying, yeah, men and women, we both recover. We both suffer from this disease. And for me, I sponsor men today because for me, that is a really, really beautiful way that I can make amends for the many thousands of men that, that I have destroyed. With, without being too divisive, uh, we're not here to pick apart. There's a lot of stuff that's been handed down that's just bad habit. It's not Alcoholics Anonymous. It's something else. But if I don't know better and I sit in the meetings and even a real alcoholic, I'm not, I'm going to get off of that thing here. I don't think anyone stayed on this meeting who doesn't suffer from what this book offers a remedy. But what we're here to do is the first italics in this book says to show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on the fellowship that is not AA. If we pick that all apart to distinguish the difference, what happens is we become divisive and we don't mean to. But if we read what it says in this book, then we know that anything other than that is BB. I asked my sponsor what BB is, and he said he didn't know, but it was an AA. All we're here to do is talk about what AA is rather than what it isn't, because guess what? Like any other alcoholic, I could find fault with Jesus if you let me. So we don't want to get on the bandwagon. We're going to lay out the precise instructions, the definition, the description. And the first thing we want to be aware of is the we in this book are the first 100 who wrote the book. I'm not a part of the we till I do what they did. Until that point, I'm a part of the they. I'm on the other side. I'm on the... But and we, and we do newcomers, right? We read the promises and then everyone knows the AA chant. We think not. Well, if I don't think they're extravagant, I'm not going to be painstaking to work. So we're just here to eliminate the confusion. But if we, we read the black part, the rest of it will be gray. And if it's gray, it ain't AA. How is that? Okay, not bad.
Thank you, Bill. Course correcting me, they're great. How many of thousands of men and women have recovered, recovered from alcoholism? You know what? That's the first promise. Right, bang. There's 27 words on this page, and we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten words into the big book, and we're given, we're given the greatest promise of this book. We're given the greatest promise. That's the first one. I don't know. I think there's like 256 promises. I don't know that for a fact. I haven't actually sat down and done them, but it's something like that. Okay. So there's plenty, not just the 12 promises that we hear being read out of the meetings of working step nine. From alcoholism, right? So we're just going to look at recovered. Apparently it is mentioned 82 times in our big book. That word is mentioned 82 times. So let's just go to two places where it actually is referred to in the book. If you go to the forward of the first edition, and Bill just said it now, we go to forward of the first edition, and that is Roman numerals XIII, 13. We, Bill just said it, the first 100 of Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body to show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is exactly is the main purpose of this book. From, so that's, and then the, the second one is on page 20. There's another way that they refer to a recovered alcoholic. On page 20, Bill calls it the ex-problem drinker. If you go to, sorry, I actually have made a note. Uh, page 20. Yep, there it is right at the top. Our very lives as ex-problem drinkers depend upon our constant thought of others and how we may help meet their needs. There you are. And alcoholism, that's the thing here. This is the disease of alcoholism. I've heard it said in the rooms, I, self, me. That's not big book, but it does make a lot of sense to me because alcoholism to me is the bondage of self that we speak of in step three, that we start to see a little bit of the truth of in step four, hear more chunks of truth in step five about how I manifest when I think I'm running the show. Driven by fear, driven by self-pity, driven by delusion. 400 forms of madness. The disease of alcoholism. And then my sponsor, what he made me do, and I, I'm going to try and see if I can screen share here. Um, and then, Bill, I'm going to ask you to jump in with this. This is a triangle, the three legacies of AA. Oh, I don't know. Let me please bear with me. I want to see if I can screen share this for you. So, in the middle of that page, on my fourth edition, there, it's a blank spot. It, there's, it's blank. But apparently, in the first, second, and third editions, this AA triangle was was printed there. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to screen share. I hope I'm going to get it right. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes. Cool. Bill, would you please dive into that circle for us? Well, first of all, not every third edition Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous had that. And it really was an AA's triangle and circle or we would have it. It was a symbol that we used. And then what happened is someone else got a hold of it and started using it for something else. And Alcoholics Anonymous was going to fight to keep it as part of our trademark, if you will. But because we don't fight anything or anyone and realize it was maybe a battle that would be financial, could put us in controversy and could be costly, we decided to let it go. As long as we're on that subject, it says we alcoholics are producers of confusion rather than harmony because I don't know anything about the triangle and the circle, although that's a joke. 
I want to say that Alcoholics Anonymous, the, the legal uh, entity that works for World Services, did not keep up on the patent for the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. That's why you see other books being printed, the Little Red Book, the compendium books where they've got a page of blankness with lines on it where you can write. In other words, the integrity of the Big Book has been lost. And a lot of people don't know that. They think they're doing someone a favor by buying a box of those little red books for $2.95 that are not put out by Alcoholics Anonymous. And someone may say, well, who cares? The information is getting out. It's a lot more affordable. Although that is all true and accurate, there's only two, two venues that support Alcoholics Anonymous World Service in New York. One is the sale of our big book. And the other is the sale of the grapevine. I'm not talking about personal contributions and stuff sent in from the services, but the only way Alcoholics Anonymous, the not-for-profit corporation, derives any revenue is through those two, the sale of those two products, the grapevine, the monthly publication, and the big book. So they 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 didn't keep up on the legal. Uh, copyright of the big book. Therefore, anyone can use that information, and many have. But what we do is we try and preserve that information that I'm passing on. It might not be 100% specific. You can check in the archives. But what I'm saying to you is we lost our, our copyright on the big book. We may get it back by the fifth edition. The lawyers just dropped the ball. They didn't renew the patent. They had so much time. And that's why you see a whole bunch of different big books, including the 75th anniversary big book that was put out, where you get a big red big, big book the size of the original or close to it with the original printing and manuscript in it. So I just thought I'd put that in there. There's three sides of the triangle, unity, service, and recovery. Recovery is the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Unity applies to the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And then service is the concepts or the traditions. And they talk about it, it's a unilateral triangle, or at least a, you know, 180 degrees, all three sides and all three angles are the same. Some of us are real good at service. Not not real good at recovery. You know, you get them. They they try and run the clubs and they try and, and they they drive more people away. I've been on that side of the triangle. That was an isosceles triangle. Then you get the unity, which means we have to get along with each other. It's very difficult. We we are people who don't get along. We don't pl play well with others. We're alcoholics. The disturbance inside. Until I take the steps, I think that you're the problem. So if I think you're the problem and I feel threatened by you, I don't get along with you, I don't stick around you, and what I do is I tend to find fault with you, and then I need to tell other people about it, which is divisive at the very least. So I think that recovery may in fact be the most important thing once I find a place to go that has a solution to my problem, because my experience is I can go to meetings for a long time surrendered by the, the lash of my last drinking bout that got me here. But uh, Dr. Thibault talks about the recuperative power of the alcoholic ego. And what that looks like is when I'm beat to a pulp and I come in here and someone offers me a cup of coffee and knows me by name, I feel pretty good. Give me a couple of weeks when my ego wakes up and the very people who were the saviors of my life two weeks ago become a bunch of idiots. So all of this goes in order. And what happens is the groups need to abide by the traditions here, because if not, we lose our common purpose, which is to carry the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. In fact, in one of the letters Bill wrote, the purpose of a meeting, the, the sole purpose of a meeting or the, the united purpose of a group is an adequate presentation of the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. We don't experience that all the time. You can go to one of these clubs I go to locally in the heartland of AA. And it's whoever has the problem of a day, usually with their kids or their boss. 
And that becomes a topic for discussion as if any of that has anything to do with recovery from alcoholism. And the problem is I need something that's going to put me in touch with this power, someone to guide me through this process, like my sponsor calls it, going through a landmine. So I get out the other side and I have as many parts as I started with and maybe even some extra, but not to blaze my own trail out of ignorance or out of lack of proper instruction so that I get blown up along the way. So unity, service, recovery, the three sides of the triangle, they say if you're on a three-legged stool and you only have two legs, you're going to fall over. If you only have one, it'll be a real wobbly fall over. I hope that helps someone. <laughs> you did? That was great. Thank you. No, Ken says my 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 co sponsor here. He said this this meeting designed to help people from stop drinking. I think you're making them thirsty. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bill. I also just wanted to make a note of this on the the side where it says unity, and like Bill said, that's, you know, the fellowship. The traditions are in the book, and they're found on page 563 to page 566. And service, the other side of that table, the other side of that equilateral triangle service, those are the concepts, and they're found on page 574 to page 575. And then recovery is our 12 steps found from page one right through to page 164. My sponsor once told me that steps are designed to help me to help me from killing, save me from killing myself. The traditions are to help me save, to save me from killing my fellows in the room and the concepts are to save me from killing everybody else. <laughs> Something like that. All right, and then Bill also jumped around. He he did sorry he did speak about um, Bull services. This is just a little bit of like if this this comes from the service manual. It says here, Alcoholics Anonymous World Services Inc. If we look in the service manual, these guys oversee the operations of the GSO. They are the printing company, like Bill said, of all conference approved literature. And they own literature copyright. So that's just a bit of like, just a little bit of who's who in the zoo. And then, <laughs> excuse me, I'm just going to go back to where it says here, how the story of how many thousands of men and women. So let's just, this is the introduction to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. What is this book all about? It says on page 45, the second paragraph, lack of power, that was our dilemma. We had to find a power by which we could live. And it had to be a power greater than ourselves, obviously. But where and how do we find this power? Well, that's exactly what this book is all about. Its main object is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problem. I'm not here when I'm sitting with the prospect, sponsee, a newcomer. I am not here to help them find God because it does tell us in the book, I think it's page 45, that the great reality is deep down every single man, woman, and child. So whether, whether you want to admit it or not, God is there, right? The whole idea, I got, your, I got your notification, Rob, thanks, I saw you, is that we find a power, a power. God's going to be there, whether we like it or not, whether we access it or not, whether we are conscious of it or not. 
the whole idea is that we access this power and the power is through the spiritual principles that are found in the 12 steps, the spiritual principles that are found in the 12 traditions and the spiritual principles found in the concepts. Because when I'm running on my principles, the bondage of self, then I'm going to show up driven by fear. I'm going to show up driven by resentment. I'm going to show up driven by self-pity, driven by delusion. And what happens? What happens? I crash into a wall and I pull the roof down on me each and every single time. And I find myself in the pits of incomprehensible demoralization. But you guys tell me, Nadia, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why don't you try something new? Why don't you try practicing these principles in all your affairs? And let's see what actually happens. That's where I have found power, not only just to stay sober by today, but to live and to solve my problem. So that's what this book is all about, guys. And we've just, yeah, we've just run around the first page. Just, I mean, I couldn't, you know, when I looked at this and I went to, I went to a big book study. I mean, I, I do plenty of these just as a side note, because I love them. I love them. I love this book. I am obsessed with this book and, I'm, and it changes every single time I open it. There's something new or there's a sentence that I never saw or there's a word that I never realized actually meant it anyway. And when I <laughs> when someone said to me, let's start at the title page, I thought it cannot, cannot possibly, what the hell can be on the title page? What can be on the title page? But here we are, we're 48 minutes into the game and I've had a ball. I hope you've had lots of fun tonight. Bill, thank you. I'm going to wrap up on my side. I'm done. I've I've exhausted myself. I'm starting to, my mouth is starting to get super dry now and my heart's starting to beat. So I think I'm, I'm running on Nadia juice now. <laughs> Thanks so much.